October 25th, 1881, 11.15 p.m. A child is born in the city of Malaysia, Spain. He enters the world with wonder in his eyes and no breath in his lungs. The midwife looks at his unmoving chest and stares apologetically at the mother. But the child's uncle will not give up. He exhales cigar smoke into the boy's nostrils. The child shudders and screams, a yell of utter abandon and pure life. At that moment of relief, no one believes that this struggling child has the power to alter history and transform the art world. But he does. Pablo Picasso has come to life. Pablo Picasso was a Spanish painter and sculptor who also designed costumes, play sets, buildings, and machinery. He is perhaps most well known for inventing cubism, a style of abstract art that involves showing several fragmented views of an object at once. Besides cubism, he also explored neoclassicism, surrealism, realism, and expressionism. According to Matthew Palsinski, his prolific output includes over 50,000 paintings, prints, drawings, sculptures, ceramics, theater sets, and costumes that convey a myriad of intellectual, political, social, and amorous messages. Picasso's artwork and groundbreaking new ideas, both expressed through a variety of mediums, made huge innovations in art and society. As a child, Picasso demonstrated an uncanny artistic talent. Throughout his childhood and adolescence, he painted and drew realistic subjects. He began receiving formal art training from his father at the age of seven in 1889, and continued with this until 1896, when he began to become a figure in the Spanish art community with the publication of his painting, The First Communion. The precision of his strokes and almost lifelike figures show how far Picasso was from his abstract paintings in the future. When he turned 16, Picasso's father sent him to study art in Madrid. However, Picasso was not fond of the strict artistic requirements at the school and found that he was more interested in studying art on his own terms. In 1900, after living in Madrid for a short time, he moved to Paris where he experienced an impoverished lifestyle. Living modestly with his friend and fellow artist Casa Gema, Picasso burned most of his work as heat for their apartment. The tough times took a turn for the worst when Casa Gema committed suicide a year later. The death of such a close friend came as a devastating shock, spurring the beginning of a new artistic era for Picasso. He later wrote, I began to paint in blue when I realized that Casa Gema had died, and so the blue period began. From 1901 to 1904, Picasso created a large body of artworks that used the color blue as the dominant shade. This time in the painter's life was one of melancholy and artistic transition from classicism to abstract art. Inspired by a tradition that had grown suspicious of classicism, the blue period marks the end of a development in which the young Pablo Picasso is trying to formulate his pictorial means that solve the problems and limitations of classicism. This would eventually culminate in cubism and the first steps toward modern abstract art. The paintings during this period were characterized by gloomy moods and contained mainly shades of blues and greens. In 1904, Picasso made the transition from his morose state of mind during the blue period to a slightly more optimistic time, known of as the rose period. This change in artistic mood was inspired by his relationship with Fernand Olivier and his increased exposure to French art. The Rose Period embodied a whimsical feeling, with circus performers, actors, musicians, and clowns used as common subjects. Most of the paintings of this time were primarily in hues of pale pinks and reds. This period ended in 1906. The turn of the 20th century was a time of change in the world, and Picasso met this with his change in art. In 1907, Picasso created the renowned painting Le Demoiselles d'Avignon, which eventually commenced the beginning of a new art movement. However, it did not seem successful at the time. As art dealer Daniel Henry Canwheeler would recall, I wish I could convey to you the incredible heroism of a man like Picasso. His spiritual solitude at the time was truly terrifying, for not one of his painter friends had followed him. The picture he had painted seemed to everyone something mad or monstrous. The inventiveness with which this painting was envisioned and carried out contrasted Impressionism and the status quo of art during the 19th century, planting the seeds for a new frontier in art, with Picasso leading the way. After a short indulgence in African art, in 1909 Picasso developed his most famous fashion of painting. The style of Cubism evolved as a result of Picasso's work with African culture, which explains why Cubism has an almost tribal flavor. This type of painting embodies emotion by showing multiple views of an object or person at the same time. 
It involves shapes, abstract figures, and bold colors. Although to some people, cubism may seem like a jumbled mess of shapes and lines, as Picasso said, Cubism is no different from any other school of painting. The same principles and the same elements are common to all. The fact that for a long time cubism has not been understood, and that even today there are people who cannot see anything in it, means nothing. I do not read English, and an English book is a blank to me. This does not mean that the English language does not exist, and why should I blame anyone but myself if I cannot understand what I know nothing about? To most, cubism is visually appealing in its confusion, and this is one of the reasons it is so popular and why its creation was such a landmark in art history. Today, it is widely used by many artists, sculptors, poets, and architects. It was also a stepping stone towards other important art movements such as Dada and Surrealism. Despite the fact that it still has many critics to this day, cubism was the first abstract style that was generally liked by the public. Although Picasso only focused on cubism for about 10 years, it was one of his most important innovations in history. He made enormous contributions to the style of art by making it a more accepted art form and encouraging the likes of Jackson Pollock and Andy Warhol to pursue more abstract forms of art. According to Matthew Palsinski, staff lecturer of Western Art at the Philadelphia Museum of Art, Where is cubism in the art world? I think cubism is one of the elephants in the room of the art world at any moment, you know, from its inceptions in 1905, 1906 to the present day. It's, uh, it's something that artists just can't seem to get away from. After World War I, Picasso began producing work in a neoclassical style, a return to order after the upheaval the world felt during the war. In July 1933, Picasso began a new and important stage in his art career, Surrealism. In his Surrealist paintings and drawings, Picasso created dreamlike experiences that were unlike anything the world had ever seen. He scorned rationality and technology that had led to the World War and began placing his mind in an alternate reality of chance, desire, coincidence, and dreams. So what makes him so successful and influential in this whole sequence of, this whole sequence of our world is really the point that we talked about last time, is innovation. He's able to uh, keep up with, with what's going on around him and really keep up with the younger generations, with some of the greater, um, the greater movements that are happening in Paris. This includes not only cubism, but into um, surrealism, into some of the more abstract movements of the mid-20th century. He's, he just continues to be an innovator in all these different styles, all these different movements. So that's, I think, what keeps him so influential. Pablo Picasso's impact on the world has been profound. All throughout his life, he conceived and discovered art in many different ways. His early developments in art were complex and pioneering, showing amazing depth and passion for someone of such a young age. He explored and experimented with many diverse forms of art, leaving no rock unturned. Without a doubt, his largest impact was the creation of Cubism, a type of art that continues to be admired to this day. He also played a role in the beginnings of Surrealism, which could arguably be one of the most popular art forms of the modern day. He inspired artists all over the world, from Salvador Dali to Frida Kahlo to Andy Warhol. But most importantly, he showed the average person that anything can be art if a person uses their imagination and emotions to create it. Every piece of his art was something new and unusual and undeniably a Picasso. His contributions and innovations in art are numerable and extraordinary. If he dreamed it, he found a way to do it. This prolific artist was once quoted as having said that, Good artists borrow, great artists steal. Picasso's art stole the heart of societal culture and made leaps and bounds into the future. He not only conquered the impossible, but destroyed any notion of it.